within a few uh, another minute while people log in for joining us this afternoon. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Mets President of Baseball Operations, David Stearns. Thank you, Ethan, and thanks everyone for for hopping on. Um, very pleased to be able to officially introduce Luis Severino and Harrison Bader uh, as official members of the Mets. Of the Mets, we're we're thrilled to have them here. I think each um, brings a, a unique skill set, an individual skill set um, that uh, gels with our team really well, um, accomplishes uh, some of the things we are looking to accomplish this offseason. Um, I'll talk briefly uh, about each one of them um, and then turn it over to them for some brief uh, uh, introductory remarks before we um, before we take questions. Um, first on Seve, uh, this is a picture that um, clearly this market and all of you know very well. Uh, you've seen him uh, at the top of the game. And when he's at, at the top of his game, um, he's one of the best pitchers in the league. Um, and, and we've all seen that. And as we went into this offseason um, and evaluated pitchers that, that could be available um, and that were on the free agent market, it, it was tough for us to find many who had higher upsides um, than Seve. And, and we believe he can get back there. Um, we believe at times last year he wasn't that far away. And so we're really excited to bring him to the Mets. Um, we know he's working exceptionally hard this offseason, and we think he's he's poised for a really successful year with us um, next year. Um, in, in terms of, of Harrison Bader, um, another player clearly that, um, that all of you are familiar with, um, and someone that I'm very familiar with uh, from, from his days in the NL Central and my, my days in the NL Central. Um, Harrison um, is uh, unquestionably one of the best defenders in all of baseball. Um, he can change the game with his defense, and, and he has the ability uh, to help us win games in a variety of different ways. Um, he's shown flashes of, of, of offensive upside, um, and we think there's, there is um, unquestionably um, a really uh, impactful offensive player um, uh, that we can, help, uh, we can help him get to there. Um, and so we're we're excited uh, to add him uh, to our team, um, and believe that he's really going to be able to impact us on, on both sides of the ball. Um, so with that, I will uh, I'll turn it over to uh, back to Ethan, and he can run the show. Sure, uh, we'll have some uh, an opening comment from Luis Severino. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Yes, you're, you're good. Okay. Uh, I just want to say thank you to David Stern and the Yankee, uh, sorry, the Mets organization for uh, uh, giving this opportunity to be, you know, here. Uh, from the beginning, we you know, we began to talk and you know, the ways that I think this thing uh, is going to help me. Uh, I'm really thrilled and we really decided to start this new journey with uh, the New York Mets. Thank you very much, Sebi. Um, and with this, uh, a few opening comments from Harrison Bader. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Ethan. Um, first and foremost, you know, thank you to David and the Mets organization for giving me this opportunity. And as I'm looking around the Zoom, I see a few familiar faces. So to you guys, nice to see you guys again. Um, and to everybody in your happy new year. Um, I'm looking forward to working alongside with you guys um, as we navigate what's going to be, uh, in my opinion, an extremely strong and and positive 2024. So, um, you know, it really goes without saying how excited my, my family and I um, are to be back in New York. So uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for us for a lot of reasons. And I'm just looking forward to taking advantage of it from every aspect, like David mentioned. So um, it's going to be a great year and I'm looking forward to it all. So hello to everybody. Thank you very much, everyone. At this time, if you'd like to ask a question, please use the raise your hand feature. We'd like to address questions for uh, Luis Severino and Harrison Bader and David Stearns regarding those two players first. At that time, uh, we'll let Luis and, and Harrison hop off and David will remain on the call to answer uh, additional baseball questions. Your first question comes from Steve Gelbs. Thanks, Ethan. Uh, hey guys. For uh, Luis, I, I want to start with you. You, know, you mentioned coming here that that 
you feel like there are a lot of things that will help you get back to where you have been and want to be. What are some of the specifics that you think um, need to to change or or you know the Mets organization can specifically help you out with to unlock what we've seen in the past? Yeah, I mean, uh, the first thing I was looking for for a team that was going to help me, I, I talked with my agent, the first thing is now I was going anywhere. I was going to a place that I was I was going to think it's going to help me, you know, and just the group of guys, you know, the the meeting that we have, uh, uh, you know, Mandy's going to be there. Mandy knows me for, for a while and knows, you know, what's get me going, uh, and also, you know, I uh, really like uh, the the pitching staff that they have there. Uh, also, Hefner, who I think, who I think is going to help me a lot, who knows a lot about the game, who's, you know, playing the game, and he's been in the game for a long time. And I think there's a combination of, uh, you know, having the, you know, mindset of also playing the game and also, with the new technology that we use. And, you know, I think uh, that combination is going to help me a lot. And then Harrison, you know, you uh, obviously know a, a bunch of people in the organization, whether it's Carlos Mendoza or certainly Pete Alonso, um, you know, having played college baseball with him. What what was it about the Mets organization that you heard about that uh, attracted you? And, and what did you feel like made this the right fit for you right now? Yeah, I mean, you know, Steve, it's definitely nice to have some familiarity um, from the coaching staff to the players. You mentioned Pete, obviously having some years at, at University of Florida. And beyond that, just talking to him around the league, uh, extremely knowledgeable, he's had a lot of success. So it's nice to kind of be back with him. Mandy, obviously, is just a baseball guy. So he's awesome. He's on it. I'm happy and excited for him to have a, a team, you know, to run himself. Um, but beyond that, you know, first and foremost, the most important thing, especially in the position that I was in this offseason, was was opportunity. And um you know, there's tremendous opportunity with the Mets. Um, they expressed, um, you know, their what they wanted to achieve in free agency. And I think that they got the player um, in me. And I think that they hit, um, they hit just that, you know, I, I can impact just like David said on, on all sides of the ball. And, and listen, there's no doubt that health is, um, you know, my main focus and we take extreme ownership of that. And when I say we, I mean, my entire team and everybody involved in making sure that I'm the best, um, you know, physically um, sound out that I can be so I can go out there and, and ultimately be impactful. So when I was navigating this entire process with my agents, um, opportunity was most important. Um, and then from there, you know, let's be real, it, to, to be able to be in New York and to continue my dream, which is to ultimately win a championship in New York. Um, you know, I'm just looking forward to taking, taking full advantage of it and, and diving into it day in and day out and seeing how it shakes out. Um, and I think the atmosphere and what New York um, can bring out of the people who rise up to the challenge of it and, and do their best to adapt and, and work with it. Um, I think it pays off. So I'm excited for the challenge and, and I couldn't be happier than it's in these colors. So, so yeah, that, that's really what it was. Thanks guys. Tony DeComo has the next question. Hey guys, this is for both uh, Luis and Harrison. Harrison, you just touched on it a little bit, but you guys both obviously have extensive experience in New York. Harrison, you're from here. Luis played your whole career here. How important was that geography to you guys when you were debating where you might want to sign? Sebi, you want to go free? You want me to go, Papa? Okay. Um, yeah, you know, New York is a special place. Um, you know, people talk about all of the different pressures and whatnot. And we, we know what New York City is about. You know, you guys have all worked here for a long time and seen a lot of players and teams. And and what I think what's what's most important to realize about New York is is all those things that we just talked about or all those things that you might say that are difficult about New York are, you know, those are all really external. Um, they kind of exist out there. And then, you know, people feel the pressure of them or people feel like they're, you know, those those characteristics, um, you know, in many ways weigh them down. But if you have the ability um, to, to use that pressure and to use that weight, if you will, and kind of flip it on its head and, and make it more internal and have that pressure um, kind of drive your decision making, um, whether it comes to recovery, whether it comes to your workouts in the off season, whether it comes to how you prepare um, day in and day out, um, 
you know, all these little decisions, if, if you use that pressure as a guiding force, um, you know, for your tomorrow, for your next decision, I think it can be ex extremely powerful. Um, and then the payoff there is, you know, if you have a great year and, and, and the team does extremely well, um, well then, you know, it, it, it's a wonderful experience and, and that's what we're playing for here. So, um, you know, there's no doubt I want to remain in New York. And again, I'm just extremely happy that David and the Mets organization gave me that, give me that opportunity. Uh, for me, you know, when I hit the free agency, you know, there was a lot of people, families and friends who, you know, wanted me to go to a place that, you know, with no pressure, uh, and then, you know, thinking more about it, you know, the thing that drives me, that keeps me going is the pressure. So I love being in pressure, you know, that's why, uh, you know, I was in New York for a long time. Uh, and like I say, I'm happy, you know, to be in this organization in the Mets because I, I want to continue to have, you know, to feel that pressure when I'm not doing good. I want, you know, to let me know so I can, you know, get better and, and, help my team, you know, help my team to win. So for me, just, you know, I love, I love uh, the pressure. I love being the atmosphere. And, you know, I've seen this, this thing, how it is in the playoffs, how the fans are in playoffs. So I just wanted to go back to that and experience that. And if I could follow up quickly with David, as an executive looking at who you might want to sign, how big of a factor, if at all, is that to have guys who have, you know, done it here and know what to expect here? But I, I think it's important to have players who embrace what New York is. And, and I think Harrison just put it really well. If if you're able to take all these external um, factors that exist with New York and use it as fuel and use it to drive you, um, it, it's, a, it's an enormous benefit um, for all of us. There's an added intensity here. We all talk about it. We all know it. Um, and uh, to have players who embrace that. Uh, who enjoy that, who thrive off of that intensity. I do think that's important. Uh, and both of these guys have that. Thanks, guys. Next question is from Mike Puma. Uh, question for David. Uh, is uh, Harrison Bader your everyday center fielder now? And if so, uh, is Brandon Nimmo your left fielder now? So I think Harrison's going to play a lot of center field field I, I think you know I term it he's, he's going to play regularly in center field um I think we're, we're fortunate we've got frankly a number of outfielders who can um who can play multiple positions who can play center field um in terms of you know is is Brandon uh going to be um you know, exclusively a left fielder I, I think we'll we'll kind of tackle that one as we get into spring training and we see uh the the true formulation of what our team looks like what it looks like towards the end of camp um, and then we'll have a more definitive answer to that. I think I think Brandon is of the mind that he wants to do whatever is best for the team. And if it means at times um, flipping back to center field, uh, he's open to it. Um, if it means playing more predominantly left field, uh, you know, he's open to that, too. So we'll kind of see how how the roster shakes out, um, whether there are opportunities for Brandon uh, to shift back over to, to, to center um, or whether it makes sense for him to to pretty much stay in left. So that, that's kind of TBD, and we'll continue that discussion through spring training. But you, but you see Harrison pretty much a, as a center fielder, right? You, you, or yes. when he's in there, you, yes. you would want him in center, right? right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Your next question is from Abby Mastraco. Uh, same question for both Harrison and Luis. Uh, I just want to know if either of you are doing anything differently this offseason, approaching your training differently in order to stay healthy and improve your health next season. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, Abby, I, I've never in my life been kicked harder in the jaw than I did um, kind of rolling into this offseason. Um, purely just from an athletic standpoint, nothing emotional. Um, it is what it is, but, but purely from waking up, you know, when everything was said and done and, and I got my, um, sports hernia surgery, uh, September 28th, you know, that the, the feeling I had simply walking around my apartment, getting into cabs, walking down subway steps, um, you know, that, that, that feeling is something I never want to feel again, maybe until I'm, uh, when it's all said and done and you rip the Jersey off my back and I can't play anymore. But I guess what I'm getting at here is, um, 
you know, you, you take extreme ownership of everything. The, these little injuries we experience, um, and I play a very physical position, you know, they happen for a reason. And clearly something was off. Um, and when one thing goes, you try to compensate with speed and then something else goes. And before you know it, you're, you're playing catch up with yourself on top of, you know, trying to, trying to work out, you know, your plan of attack to, to face whoever's on the mound. Um, it's just too much. And, and I do firmly believe that with the right team, with, with the proper training, with guided training, um, with doing your research with people who you want to surround yourself with, not only for the off season, but for the entirety of spring training and, and, the, and, the, and the entire season, um, to build that repetition, to have that muscle tissue work the way it's intended to work and properly for your sport and what your position requires of you. I do believe it's going to pay out. So, you know, I'm in Tampa fully um, with the right people. I did a lot of research behind it. Um, and I feel extremely confident with the people I'm with. Um, pair that with my heading coach um, and all the work you do behind the scenes. I feel extremely confident, confident moving forward. Um, something that you know, maybe I wish I had earlier, but I'm not going to spend any time turning, trying to turn the clocks back because it's not possible. Um, it, it's just really important to have what happened in the past, learn from it, um, and then be better for tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, steps of death have been taken for sure. Uh, for me, uh, of course, I mean, I'm always looking forward to, you know, obviously it's on to try something new. Uh, I mean, I've been talking a lot to the uh, Mets training uh and then we've been trying to you know uh following like finding ways to you know keep me in the in the field more uh i said right now like i feel 100 percent and for me the main focus is stay like that for the whole season uh, i mean there is a lot of stuff that i'm working uh one of the main things that i'm focused uh, this whole season is uh sleep uh I mean, uh, you know, talking to people about that, I was really bad sleeper the last, I mean, my whole my whole life. So I think there was something in there. Uh, I talked to a sleep doctor about it. So we are finding ways to, you know, get better also with the trainers, you know, my my body, how my body is working. Uh, we been to a lot of, you know, measurements, of, uh, uh, you know, seeing like, my power, where my power come from, and how we can you know, keep it the same way, you know, for the whole season. So, I mean, for me, just, you know, how, when I get to the spin training, how I can stay the same way to the whole, for the whole, uh, you know, for the whole season. So, I think everybody is uh, together. Uh, we are talking and we are trying to get a plan to, you know, to get me ahead to the whole season. Thanks, guys. Next question is from Tim Britton. This question is for David. You, you talked about getting Luis back to kind of his top form. What, what makes you confident that you guys are going to be able to do that for him uh, this upcoming season? What did you see from him last year that, that suggests that it's, he's, he's close? Yeah, so I, I think that's where it starts is, is um, there were elements of what Luis was doing last year that were very similar to when he was at the top of the game, the top of his game. Um, particularly down the stretch and into September, um, I, I think we saw some some pretty encouraging signs. And then I think that the second part is just as we went through this process and, and getting to know Luis, Luis um, and and hear his determination to get his body in the right spot. Um, you know, a, a lot of this is is just making sure that that you know we're physically ready um, and that we're healthy when when we go out there and. And for a guy like Sevi, um, I think that's a big part of this is is keeping him healthy, um, training the right way. He's been incredibly diligent, um, certainly since we've been in touch with him over this offseason with his offseason training. Um, you just heard him talk about his sleep program uh, and, and and maybe it's it's addressing some, you know, somewhat maybe minor strength yeah. um, deficiencies that he's had that allow him to put his body in, in just a slightly better place. Um, and, and we think will lead to success. So, um, you know, look, th there are no guarantees, but we're, we're, we're starting with someone who's performed at a very high level, um, in this city in big moments. Um, and a lot of those attributes, uh, appear so to, to still be there. That's a really good place from which to start. Then for Harrison, um, just wondering when you look back at these last two seasons, how much do you think you're 
the physical issues that you've dealt with have kind of impacted your performance and how close do you feel to getting back to, to what you can be, especially offensively? Yeah, you know, Tim, I think they, uh, I think it's really difficult at this level if you're not physically there um, to perform, you know, guys are just really good and they do their homework. Um, and, you know, you're not just facing the arm on the mound, but you're facing uh, a pitching staff that did their research. You're, you're facing an experienced catcher that has a, an ability to adjust on the go, swing to swing. So you know, you're really facing an army of guys when you go up there. And, and first and foremost, um, you know, you got to be physically capable to, to do what you're trying to do. Um, and, and I take extreme ownership of being physically prepared. Um, and listen, you know, it is, it is what it is. It's, it's been a rough two seasons, there's no doubt. But having gone through those experiences and had a period there, obviously in the playoffs of 2022 when I was very healthy, um, you know, being physically there is, is really, really important. And then taking the steps to do everything I can to prepare physically to get the absolute most out of my talent to help this team win, plain and simple. Um, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, anything beyond just simply putting the work in, getting up, showing up, continuing to do the reps, um, getting the proper recovery and getting the proper sleep. And like Sebi talked about and showing up the next day and doing it until the season's done and hopefully it's it's after world series which is all of our goals um it's really all there is to it it's just a commitment to that it's a complete dive into that um and if there's an extra gear that i have to tap into which i do believe i have to tap into because every year you know baseball players age differently and the stresses are different so um tapping into that gear channeling that um focus um is is all i'm, I'm really concerned with so as long as I was taken care of and I'm physically there, I know how effective I can be. Um, and I'm looking forward to continue that day in and day out. And, you know, again, take it one day at a time, one game, game at a time and just go from there. So, um, so yeah. Your next question comes from Bruce Beck. Hey, Sevi, do you consider yourself a one, a one, a, a two, a three, a four, in the rotation, where where do you see yourself? I mean, for me, it doesn't matter. I mean, I can be a uh, bullpen catcher if they want me to. I'm gonna go out there and kind of compete. I mean, a number doesn't, you know, doesn't say nothing. You know, you can start as a two or as a one. It doesn't matter, you know. And at the end, we all have the same goal: is to win. Every time they give me the ball, you are number one that day. So you're going to go out there, you're going to compete, and you're going to give you 100%. Harrison, David said you can contribute in a number of ways, and he mentioned you have upside offensively. So what are your goals for this year offensively? Hey, Bruce, good to see you. You too. Um, offensively, my goals. Um, listen, my, you know, my goals are to be sharp, to be sharp every single day. Um, Results standpoint, listen, I don't know. I, I truly don't believe. I think I've had months. I think I've had, you know, two months at a time. I've had weeks. I've had certainly series where I've definitely tapped into my potential in this league. But, you know, my number one goal is, is to tap into my potential every day and see how it looks after six months in, at this level. Um, that's my main focus. Um, I know I can do it. I believe I can do it. And it's going to take work. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the work. Um, so, listen, with that said, I'm going to force my way into the lineup. I'm going to force Mendy's hand as often as I possibly can. Um, you know, I'm not here to stomp my feet about where I'm playing or if I'm not playing. I just know I'm going to be ready whenever my name's called upon. And that's my only focus and singular focus. Um, and, and with that simple focus comes all the work behind the scenes that I'm looking forward to, to executing every single day. Um, and listen, when it comes down to it, I know I, you know, I, I, I just want to win. And I know the best version of myself is a focused, simplified, very physical version. Um, and I'm just, again, looking forward to, to, to tapping into that every day and seeing how it shakes out when it's all said and done. Thank you, guys. Next question is from Veronica Contreras. Um, hello, congratulations to both of you. I have two questions for Luis, and I'm gonna do them in Spanish. Luis, Háblame de lo que significa para ti quedarte en Nueva York sabiendo la presión que se juega aquí, esa presión en Nueva York. Hola, Verónica, ¿cómo estás? Eh, no, eh, contento eh, de quedarme en Nueva York, como dije anteriormente. 
Eh, me gusta la presión, eso es lo que me define a mí, eso es lo que me hace a mí eh, ser un mejor pelotero. Eh, me, me gusta competir bajo la presión, porque, ¿sabes? Los fanáticos te dicen la verdad. Cuando tú no estás jugando, tú, tú vas a ver, y cuando estás jugando bien, tú vas a ver también. Entonces, eso es lo que a mí, ¿sabes? Me, me, me gusta ver, porque eso me, me impulsa a ser mejor pelotero, a trabajar más. La segunda pregunta es, conociendo también a Carlos Mendoza, nuevo manager de los Mets, ¿eso influyó un poco en tu decisión de venirte a jugar aquí con los Mets? Claro, un, sí, porque eh, Carlos es una persona que lo conozco desde mucho tiempo, eh, sabe, sabe la forma que yo soy, y yo pienso que sabe, había durado mucho para sabe, tener un, un, un empleo como manager en la Grandes Ligas. Creo que va a ser un tremendo manager, y sabe, eh, si yo voy a dar 100%, voy a competir, yo prefiero eh, hacerlo como un manager como Mendoza. Gracias, suerte, good luck. Thank you. Next question is from Bob Clappish. Questions for uh, Luis. Sevi, now that you've had uh, a couple of months to think about it, were you, are, have you been able to pinpoint why you struggled last year, if there's been something specific that you need to fix? going forward and how confident are you that you can be the pitcher that you were in 2017 and 18? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that I think I was doing wrong, you know, I always have problems with, you know, you know, how it is with the tipping and stuff like that. So, and also when you know that you were doing something to let the hitters know that possible or change or slide is coming. So you think a lot about that. So I think, I need to address that now. So when I go in the mound, when the season starts, I just need to focus in, you know, pitching and forget about uh, my glove is too high or it's too low or something like that. So my main focus this all season is that. And then I think this is the right moment to do all those things. I mean, uh, I feel really good. I mean, the last couple of years, my arm has been a problem and last year, I mean, I threw a lot of high, you know, intensity innings, right? You know, I threw, you know, 40, 35 something pitches in one inning. So that's mean at least that my, my arm was really good, was healthy. So I just think that I need to, you know, uh, address those kind of problems right now and then just, you know, pitch when I need to pitch and forget about everything else. So you do think it was tipping, looking back? I mean, there is a lot of things. I mean, like I said before, when I think I was I was tipping, you know, also I was not focused the game. Uh, I was I was missing a lot of pitches too, you know. I was not. I think there is not one thing that I can say. Oh, it was because of this, but I think there is a uh, small things that got you know together at once that I couldn't handle at the same time. So that's why I think. Because I had time now, I need to work on all those things. So I guess we've been training and then to the season, everything's clean. Thank you. Next question is from Manuel Gomez. Uh, okay. Uh, Sabrino, congratulations. And, and Harrison, congratulations on, on signing with the Mets. Um, my question is for Sabrino. I wanted to... Uh, I don't know if you were aware, the Todd Frazier, a former Yankee and a Met, uh, mentioned that this could be your final straw in the big leagues. Do you feel that to be the case? Are you entering the season feeling that that you have to kind of prove yourself to be an ace again? I mean, for me, I had to prove myself, you know, uh, what I can do. Uh, I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna give my hundred percent, like I said before. Uh, whoever said that, I mean, I think he doesn't know much about baseball. Uh, I mean, there's I can mention a lot of players, a lot of hitters, those that been to you know the worst season uh, and come back. Uh, I mean, this is just. I mean, nobody is great for you know, you know, ten, eight years. I mean, if, if you have somebody like that, you have to keep it because that's, that's going to be a whole thing. So I think uh, for me, I just need to be in the field, uh, compete, and not worry about, uh, you know, uh, you know everything outside of baseball. You know, focus on my thing, 
one piece at a time. And then, you know, uh, time will know, you know, maybe you can ask him, ask me this question. And when we are in the first half or when the season is over and we can both look for the guy who said that and talk to him. Next question is from Pat Ragazzo. Hey guys, uh, congratulations on signing with the Mets. Um, this one's for Harrison. Um, you played with Pete Alonso back in college. So I was w wondering what your level of excitement was to reunite with him and, and play in the same lineup as him again. And I was also wondering if you have been in touch with him since you signed with the Mets. Yeah, Pat, I'm, I'm extremely excited to be back with Pete. Um, you know, actually, when I was a uh, when I was a freshman and Pete was an incoming incoming freshman the following year, I was the one who took him around campus, showed him everything. He was, you know, we all have a we have a weekend where we have to be responsible for the incoming freshman. And um, you know, first and foremost, just just a great kid, just a great guy, um, great energy, great smile, nice big you know polar bear presence, if you will. Um, you know, you fast forward, obviously what he's done in this league has been extremely impressive, but it's not by, um, accident by any means. Um, you know, I know the way he talks about his craft. I know the way he works. Um, I know how he thinks about what a pitcher's trying to do to him. Um, and all those things paired together, you know, you produce extremely, um, positive results like he's seen so far in his career. So to be around that level of, of, uh, confidence, to be around the level of preparation, um, you know, is, is extremely exciting for me. Um, and again, like I mentioned earlier in this Zoom call, having some familiarity on a team, uh, you know, is extremely, extremely important. It really is. Um, you know, I know what, uh, you know, I know what he's about. I know I can imagine if he's no different, which I don't think he is. Um, from the Pete I know from all those years at UF, um, it's just a great, it's a great culture in the clubhouse. And I'm only going to add to that in a positive way. So, you know, with that said, I, I have been in contact with him. He's the first person I texted, obviously, when um, ultimately the, the decision was made. Um, and I'm just extremely excited. Um, as I've heard from him, it's a great clubhouse. It's a great, great competitive group of guys. And again, that's all that I care about. I want to compete. Um, I want to do it in a positive way. I want to cheer my teammates on 24-7. Uh, and I want to win. And, uh, you know, Pete's really that glue, um, you know, to it all. So looking forward to seeing seeing more of the guys, learning more about the guys, but specifically as it pertains to Pete. Yeah. I'm, I'm extremely excited. Um, I've been talking with him pretty regularly and I'm sure as, as I get going here, we start facing lives. I'll, I'll be, you know, I'll be seeing him before spring training. Thank you. No problem. Next question comes from Ed Randall. I just wanted to uh, ask both of you uh, if you ever imagined as Yankees being uh, members of the Mets. Um, hey, Edwin. Yeah, I, I have to be honest with you, one hundred percent, no doubt about it. Um, and I think that kind of plays into you just never know what's going to happen in baseball. You never know how the game's going to come full circle. Um, even even growing up as a kid, you know, my family. I was born into a a family that just happened to be a Yankees household. But on my mother's side, I mean, it's and they have a thousand cousins. Um, you know, they're all Mets fans and that presence and that butting of the heads, if you will, as, as just a young fan of baseball. And that, that's all I really remember from my, you know, from my holidays when we'd all get together. Um, it's just it's just it's just a really exciting opportunity. Um, it's one if I pull myself out for a second and just realize the perspective that as a, a New Yorker, I get to play on both on both teams. Uh, it, it's an absolute dream come true. And to, to take it a step further to, to win a championship in New York is um, is an even bigger step. And I can assure you. The championship matters um, to all of us tremendously. And what colors it in, it's in, um, you know, I, I just want the championship and I'm looking forward to the experience of chasing it this year um, in this uniform. So I definitely imagine this is a possibility. Luis, what about you? I mean, for me, I mean, I, I was I was not imagining even going to any team, you know, I was think I was going to die a Yankee. Mm. But, you know, when uh, everything came down free agency, I was looking for something that, you know, kept me the same, like I said before, you know, same pressure, you know, same kind of feel that can get me going uh, when I'm the man, when I'm, you know, when I have bad outing, they will let me know, you know, and I need I need that. I need that in my life. I need people that tell me the truth when I, I'm not doing good. So that, that, you know, can get me to the group and, you know, 
anywhere that I can go to, you know, to get me better. And I think this is the place. And, you know, when, you know, I saw what they bring to the table and the team that they, they have, you know, uh, that they want to win, people that compete, that, you know, that got me even more to go into that team. Next question is from Max Perez Jimenez. Max, your line is open. Okay, we're going to go to uh, Mark Roseman. Congratulations, guys. Uh, Happy New Year as well. David, uh, this is the first parts for you. I, I know your introductory press conference, you had mentioned that growing up here in New York, you're acutely aware of the marketplace. Um, that being said, in the past, you know, Met fans live and die with the big ticket items that are out there. And this offseason, it seems like on Twitter, the second a, a big ticket item came off that wasn't a Met, you know, they, they went crazy. Your experience in Milwaukee, it seems like it's more of the under the radar signings that really get it done. Uh, these two guys are really big time competitors. How do you kind of do like a hybrid what you did in Milwaukee, but try and do it here where everyone's expecting the Mets to sign every single free agent? And the second part is for Seve and Harrison. Um, you know, you guys are brought here. And the Met fans love your type of players. Uh, what are you going to embrace about the, the competitors that you guys are and the way Met fan, the Met fan base embraces that? Thank you, guys. Thanks, Mark. I'll, I'll start. Um, look, I, I love that our fan base wants us to sign everyone out there. Right. That That's great. Um, one, that I, I think that means that what this organization has done over the last couple of years has raised the bar um, and has set high expectations. And, and that's a great thing. We want high expectations. Um, we want our fans passionately engaged um, and, and we want them really to demand excellence. And, and that's what we're striving um, to succeed in. And excellence um, requires, uh, I, I think, thoughtful, strategic, um, and hopefully wise acquisitions throughout. It, it certainly includes the big ticket um, you know, premium free agents um, when those are the right opportunities. Um, and it also ensures that you have really talented players throughout the entirety of your roster. Um, we, we, we can't win with one, two, three, four, five uh, exceptional players. Really, over the course of the year, you need somewhere between 50 and 60 um, players all contributing to uh, a really successful season. And so that's what um, we're, we're, we're out to do. Um, that's what we're out to accomplish. But in terms of, of, of the fan interest, the passion, uh, the desire for us to improve, um, those are all positives for me. Um, and, and ultimately, I think it, it makes us all do our jobs better. Um, and that, that same intensity that Harrison and, and Sevy were talking about, um, that, that fuels them, uh, it fuels us in the front office as well. Um, so I, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, I can go next. Um, you know, I, th I think what's most important to embrace about the Mets fan base um, are the standards of, of winning um, and winning in New York um, and not to compare ourselves to any other organization, um, not to compare ourselves to any past Mets team or any past version of where the organization may have been or came from, you know, where we all live currently as players is, is right now in this upcoming season. Um, and, you know, I think it's really important to, I think it's really important to not, sorry, I'm receiving a, uh, a phone call. I think it's really, really important to, to, to never get on your high horse, especially in, uh, you know, in New York. Um, I think both organizations, but specifically the Mets have experienced what it's like to, to have heartbreak on the other side of winning and have heartbreak on the other side of success. You know, when things are going well is, is to continue to show up with our heads down and continue to be competitive and continue to kick the crap out of our opponent that night. Um, just to stay focused on the task at hand, which is coming together as a group and winning after nine innings and keeping that snow globe, that circle, that locker room, 
you know, all the energy we got going forward, um, keeping that as tight as possible. Um, so those, those standards of winning and those standards of expectations, I think I'm going to embrace the most through my level of preparation, um, through the level of, of how seriously I take uh, this season. And uh, I'm going to make it as fun as possible. But there's no doubt that uh, you know, if you dive into that energy properly, um, you know, it, it can be extremely powerful and it can be uh, it can pay off really well for all of us. And I'm just going to do my best to add, um, you know, that level of intensity to the clubhouse and, and that level of intensity to how I plan to embrace, um, you know, every night being a Met. Yeah, for me, it's uh, how Bader was saying, you know, the energy of uh, the fans out there. You know, uh, we play a lot of games against, you know, the men's. And just, you know, going through the booth and walking before everybody was, you know, any of the guys who was in the field, it was it was, it was was tough, you know, those fans out there. So I want to feel the same thing when I'm pitching for the men's. You know, I know that energy that they have and that they're passionate about winning. So I just want to go out there, I give my 100%, you know, and I know when when – when I hear, you know, everybody, you know, sharing my name and, and clapping, that's going to get me even more going to, you know, trying to, you know, to get to the level that everybody knows, uh, you know, surveys in the mound. And, you know, I just, you know, feel really, you know, happy uh, to be in this team. Uh, and I think, you know, like I said before, feeling that energy from the Mets is going to get me going. We'll try one more time for uh, Max Perez. Max? I want it for you, Max. No. Okay. At this time, <laughs> um, I, want, I want to thank uh, Luis and Harrison for joining us um, for your time this afternoon. And uh, you gentlemen can pop off, and David will stay on to answer some additional baseball questions. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Ethan, thank you. Everybody in here, thank you. It's, again, familiar faces. Nice to meet a bunch of guys. And, and David, thank you very much. I'll talk to you soon. All the best, guys. Have a great night. Thank you, guys. Thanks for hopping on. Bye-bye. At this time, uh, please uh, raise your hands for uh, questions for David. And we will start with uh, Steve Gelbs. Hey, David, just curious now with all the changes that you guys have made and additions you've made to the starting staff, do you feel like you're you're finished for the most part with rounding out the starting rotation or are you still looking to to add to that group? Yeah, I, I don't think you're ever finished, um, especially when you're talking about pitching and especially when you're talking about starting pitching. I, I think we're um, going to be perpetually on uh, the lookout for ways to – improve um ways to get better uh ways to add um i think we've made uh, some significant progress um i like the the three arms that um we've added to our starting rotation um uh but but you never have enough starting pitching and so we'll, we'll continue to look i don't know whether there's going to be uh another um acquisition of significance uh for the rotation before the the star spring training um but but we've got to keep our eyes open um, and we've got to stay involved. And then um, regarding the the Mauricio injury, uh, you had said when we were at the winter meetings that you thought the the third baseman was internally on the roster. Does not having Mauricio this year change your calculations at all about what to do going into spring training at third base this year? I, I still believe um, we have options internally on our roster um, that deserve opportunity. Um, and, and, and frankly, for, um, you know, the, the or long-term organizational outlook, um, need opportunity. Um, we, we have to provide young, talented players with opportunity at the major league level. Um, and, uh, and, and I believe over time, as you do that, as an organization, you're rewarded for it. Um, and, and you get really quality players, solid players who contribute in your organization for a long time coming through your own system. Um, so I'm excited to see um, what our younger players uh, can do. And, and we have some of them who, who we believe can play third base. Thanks. Next question is from Mike Puma. Uh, David, just to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, clarify on uh, Bader earlier, 
you you see him playing every day like you know a guy gets 500 550 at bats look I, i'm not i'm not going to classify or, or you know explicitly state how many at bats i think that's determined over the course of the year and certainly mendy's going to have um, a lot to say about that. I, I think we signed him because we believe he's a really talented player. Um, and I would expect him to play regularly in center field. Uh, exactly what that looks like over the course of the season, um, you know, to be determined. But uh, we believe in in his talent. Um, certainly, we believe in him defensively. And as I said, we think he can impact the game offensively as well. Uh, so he, he's going to get he's going to get plenty of playing time. Um, some of it's going to be matchup based, uh, but but he's going to get plenty plenty of playing time in center field. Also, do you feel you need? I mean, you <clears throat> upgraded uh, defensively a lot. You've added arms. Do you feel you need another bat here? So that's something we're we're still um, evaluating, um, and, and we're going to see what becomes available. So I, I wouldn't necessarily close the door on that. I also don't think it's essential. And, and some of that is is interrelated to the question I just answered about third base, where we do have young players um, who we want to make sure have sufficient at bats. Um, uh, you know, sometimes it, it, sort of that bat first player, when we're talking about uh, a DH position, it can be helpful to rotate players through that. So, um, you know, we, we haven't made a firm decision on that one yet. Um, and, and I think it's still, um, a little bit to be determined and and uh we're still discussing next question is from tony nicomo hey david just to ask uh much more broadly about your roster where do you still feel that you need to add and how aggressive just in general do you plan to be over the final month of the offseason or have you sort of already done the bulk of what you intended to do so i think we're going to stay involved at everywhere look the, the, there's no perfect team and and we are not perfect um in in various segments of our our roster so we're going to stay involved um across the board um yeah i, I think specifically um you know we, we are looking at the pen um that's not going to be a surprise to anyone i think uh you know finding ways to to solidify our bullpen uh, makes some sense um we can do that in a variety of different ways uh uh, it could be um, lengthening out that unit. Um, it could be providing different looks. Um, but that that's certainly an area of the team that we continue to examine. You're obviously in a very difficult division. You knew that coming into the offseason. How do you feel like this? Like, how good do you feel like this roster is? How equipped is it to compete with the Braves, the Phillies, the Marlins teams that were playoff teams last year? Look, I, I, every year is a different year, and I'm a big believer of not setting any limits on any team. Um, and, and so we're putting together a team that we fully expect and believe will be competitive. Um, you're right. We're in a really good division uh, with a couple of very well-run organizations um, that have had some really quality years um, in the recent past. Um, and it's our job to put together teams that can compete with them. Thank you. Next question is from Abby Mastracco. Uh Hi, David. I am curious, what do you... Do you think you need more high leverage arms in the bullpen right now? Just how do you sort of assess the bullpen where it is at the moment? Yeah, I I, I think look, we we'd like to add to our reliever mix. Um, you know, one of the interesting things about bullpens, if if you kind of look at the really good bullpens in baseball each year, there's sort of an evolution that occurs throughout the year. Um, often what that unit looks like in April and May is very different than what that unit looks like um in august and september and there are probably names in really good bullpens in august and september that no one was really thinking about playing prominent roles in those bullpens uh at the front of the year so i'm very cognizant that this is a a part of a team um, that generally has some fluidity to it um and generally can go through different versions of itself over the course of the year so certainly um you know we want we want to put together the best unit in the pen that we possibly can as of opening day but we also recognize that there are going to be opportunities to change the mix, potentially improve as we go through a full season. Thank you. Next question is from Disha Thozar. Hey, David. Just have you discussed a contract extension with Pete 
this off season? And do you have a deal in place to maybe not engage in that conversation once spring training starts or once the season starts, or will that sort of be open and ongoing for you? As a general practice, um, yeah, I, I tend not to discuss um, any contract negotiations with any particular player, and, and I'll keep that practice going. And this, I'll, I'll continue to say, um, Pete's a really good player. He's an important part of our organization. Um, we're excited to have him here, and certainly we hope um, that we can have him here for a while. Yeah, and then just to follow up, I guess, do you have any concerns with him about like tackling this conversation throughout the season and handling that pressure, whether it's coming from the media or his teammates or anywhere else? I, th I think Pete has proven he can handle pressure pretty well. Um, he, he's performed at a very high level in a high, highly pressurized environment. Um, I'm not concerned about Pete handling pressure. Thanks. Next question comes from Ron Blum. Hey, Dave, thanks for doing this. Uh, looking back, uh, how did you think the last few days of the Alamoto negotiations went down? Were you confident going into the final day? Looking back, do you think his first choice was always the Dodgers? What's the disappointment after all the travel and effort put in? Yeah, look, I, you go through these negotiations, and these are lengthy negotiations, and, and there are always kind of those ebbs and flows. And at times you feel like, uh, you know, you've got some optimism and then at times, um, you know, maybe you sense that the player's preferences are, are going elsewhere. And so um, I think by the time we got towards the end of that process, we recognized that the preferences were probably in L.A., uh, but we certainly had an obligation uh, to put our best foot forward in everything we did. Um, I think we did that as an organization. I think we were very competitive. Uh, I, I think we demonstrate our, our sincerity throughout the process. Um, and we didn't get the player. And, and certainly that's disappointing. Um, but that's going to happen at times. And we've got to move on and, and continue to do our work. Jerry Beach is next. Hey, David. This is a piggyback to Steve's question. But uh, the season high for innings amongst your current starters since the pandemic is 179 and change by Sean in 2021. Uh, how concerned are you with the depth of your starting pitching and getting 850 plus innings from your starters as currently constructed? Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll go back to what I said to Steve. Like you're, you're, you never have enough starting pitching. Um, and and uh, if, if you feel like you have enough starting pitching, generally by the time you get to May, you realize you don't. Um, so uh, I, I think you're you're always on the lookout for for starting pitching. You're always on the lookout for innings. I will say I'm excited by the number of upper level pitching prospects we have, and and the number of guys who um, either continue um, to get their feet wet in the major leagues this year, or uh, guys who can potentially make their major league debut. I, I think it's unique that you can um, you know really fill out if you wanted to. Um, uh, triple and double A rotations with uh, exclusively homegrown talent. Um, and we would have the ability to to do that um, uh, if we wanted to. So, um, you know, yeah, I, I always want more starting pitching. Uh, we've all been around this long enough to know uh, how fast starting pitching depth um, can, can disappear um, if you get a couple of injuries. Uh, I also am excited over the course of the year, uh, to see some of our younger pitchers take that next step in their development, get to the major league level, um, and give them an, op an opportunity to have success here. Pat Rogazzo is next. Hey, David. Um, what kind of reports have you received regarding the health of Jeff McNeil and Sarley Marte up until this point? And what makes you confident that they're going to be able to bounce back this season to being the impact pieces in the lineup that they were in 2022? Yeah, look, both, both those guys seem to be in a good spot. Um, and that in and of itself is probably the, the greatest reason why I have confidence. I, I think um, looking at, at what Marte went through last year, and I wasn't here, um, but just hearing about it, it was a battle every day for him. Um, and he's such a competitive guy. He wanted to be out there, but it was a battle. Uh, and when you're fighting – um, physical ailments from from day one, it can be a struggle, and I think it was for him last year. So to to get him um, in the spot where he is now, um, where he's eager to play, he's excited to play, he'll be ready for spring training. That that's a great step in the right direction. And then with Jeff, it was you know some nagging things and and really just a strange year for him. 
Um, and, and sometimes that happens um, and it can steamroll on you a little bit. You can get frustrated. Uh, you know, you wake up and it's June and, and maybe the line doesn't look exactly like you want it to look or what you're accustomed to. And you can press and before you know it, it's August and it hasn't turned around. And, and so look, we do see really good players go through challenging years um, and then often they bounce back. And so, uh, you know, those guys are, are clearly big parts of our team. And and we're certainly um, looking forward to them having bounce back years. Thank you. David, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon.